Although Vaught Hemingway Stadium sits empty, the hearts of the Rebel Nation are full. In his first season, head coach Hugh Freeze has returned the Rebels to postseason play. It's been very rewarding. Um, we've had some gut-wrenching losses um, that, that were part of it, but I think that uh, anyone that's been around this program uh, clearly understands that our kids have given phenomenal effort for this university, and that's the one thing that we said we would require and demand of them, and, they, and they've done that. They put themselves in a position because of their uh, effort and attitude and the way they came to work each week to uh, get 60 more minutes in a bowl game. And, and, it, and it happened at crunch time when our back was against the wall and, and they performed extremely well in the Egg Bowl. And to win that and send us to a bowl game, you know, it, it, it uh, certainly, we wish we could have had some of those wins earlier that uh, we were close in, but the way we ended the season certainly uh, gives us some satisfaction. Yeah, well, anytime you win, our expectations didn't change here. You know, uh, ours are to prepare each week to, to play uh, the opponent and to prepare our kids the best and to give them the best chance to succeed. And I uh, really think our coaches did a great job in doing that, particularly after the difficult losses of bringing them back and them still having a great attitude and preparing the way we did to play. So, but anytime you win, expectations change. You know, right now with us winning six games, everybody's already excited about next year and what the possibilities are. And, and I get that, I understand it, and you know, we embrace that. Um, but you still, I don't think your expectations can change when you're preparing for a game, you take one, one at a time and, and try to give them the best chance to win that game. While the Ole Miss student body is at home for the holidays, the Rebel football team will forego the break in preparation for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Coming to this year, you know, a lot of uh, ESPN and a lot of newspapers, a lot of papers really didn't give us a chance coming to this year because no one knew what we had. You know, we have a majority of the same guys from last year, but the thing is, is what from last year and this year is guys are buying in and guys are believing. And you know, you know, for defensive line, for instance, you know, coming into the season, they ended up picking us for last for D line, and we ended up being, I guess, uh, first or second in sacks and TFLs in the SEC. So the main thing is, is guys were just buying in and guys were just believing in one another. And I believe, you know, from last year and this year, it's just a, a belief factor, just believing in the man next to you and just you know, telling the man next to you, you know, I got you, whether whether I, I whether I mess up or not, just going 110 miles per hour every play and just holding each other accountable is what was uh, the big difference in this year. Well, it, it meant it meant a lot to me that you know when you get to those close games, a lot of times, even when we did have close games, you know, the past few years, you know, it was like we gotta win it, we gotta win it, we gotta win it, we gotta win it, and uh, Coach Freeze came in and showed us that you don't have to go out there just to win. If you go out there and just play as hard as you can and play, you know, for the person next to you, then everything will work its way out. You know, I find myself looking, I feel so tired and down in the game when things aren't going our way. But, you know, I can't, I can't feel that way. I can't play that way because I know it's, you know, people are next to me counting on me to get this block done. You know, running backs are counting on me to open up a lane and quarterbacks are telling us, you know, they're expecting us to make that block. So. Once you do that, you know, things work their way out. And uh, when everybody's thinking that way, I mean, nothing but good can happen. Been here a long time, and Like I said, coming out for two, you know, two bad years. And then for you to go out, you know, and you be able to look out there and see, see these sophomores and freshmen and juniors out here playing hard for you. Like, man, there's no other feeling like it. And, then, and you know, the fact that I was able to sit on the sideline and actually watch it. You know, it's a different feeling when you're playing in the game and you can sit back and, you know, watch the people actually play for you. And, I mean, it was no other feeling like that. I mean, I was like, I get a chance, you know, get a chance to look out there and like, okay, this guy's balling out in like every play. You never see him take off. Even if it's a bad play on him, he's still chasing the ball down. Or, you know, he's trying to still score, do whatever he can to help us win that game. 
And I mean, they I feel like they really play for us seniors on that game. Well, as a senior, um, it's just you know it's your last bout. You know, it's, you have 12 battles. You know, and you want to win enough to to take you to an extra game. You want to have a you want to go out with a bang basically. And I think this year has been a, has been a great year, and we still got one more game to play, and it's gonna be great for us, man. But just. The time, my time here and being a senior and, you know, being in here with the highs and being here with the lows is, is great to end on a high. My favorite thing was knowing that people had to respect us because, you know, the last two years it was always, you know, the other team by 30, the other team by 40, the other team by 40. You know, now it's like, well, we don't know. You know, we can't, we can't give you those numbers because Ole Miss been playing like this these past few weeks. And you know, just uh, coming off a of struggling offense last year, and Coach Freeze bringing in a new system that I feel fits us a lot better. Um, it just let me know that you know we can we can do things. You know, when our back we can we can we came out fighting when our back is against the wall. You know, I, you're gonna miss them every single year because we get close to our kids. But this particular one, just being our first and knowing that. I had to lean on them several times during the tough transition times, particularly back in the spring, that we need their help in the buy-in process. Just to know that they really helped us in our journey here start the buy-in and people followed their lead because of the way they went about it, uh, that, that'll be a, a memory etched in my mind forever. Before the Rebels will open the playbook and begin study of the Pittsburgh attack, the coaches focus on sharpening the team's fundamentals. Reach him, Win. As the team wraps up their 15 practice schedule prior to leaving for Birmingham, the second biggest game of the postseason is about to take place. Players versus coaches. What's up, man? Hey! Hey, seven on seven. Team versus the coaches. I don't know what to say, but we about to get this practice in. We about to have this seven on seven first. And we gonna win, because I know my boys gonna go hard, you know what I'm saying, for each other. Let's see if the coaches gonna go hard for each other like my boys gonna go. And we're going to see how it's going to go. Throw it up. I think some of the seniors, uh, Jay Jones and EJ Epperson, they challenged the coaches to a 7-on-7 seven -seven match. And uh, uh, luckily, you know, I think the, the rules were if we won, they cut some of practice down. And um, so we had a 7-on-7. Seven -seven, uh, we had They got to pick the players, so they picked some of the bigger, slower guys, thinking that, you know, you know they were going to run over them. So uh, practice comes up, and Gilbert P and uh, Justin Bell, man, they. <laughs> they had they had some field days. They were the, definitely the MVPs, man. It was fun, you know, switching jerseys with some of the other offensive players, and uh, it was cool, man. It was a good environment. You definitely want to have fun while you practice because it makes practice easy. You know, you don't want to be out there miserable, and that kind of just shows what kind of coaching staff we got. These some young guys that can get out there and play with us, you know, and like I say, compete. Big boys against the coaches. I had to go with that. Big boys against the coaches. Seven on seven. Think. You ready to look that thing in, baby? I might have to run by you. I might have to run by you. See the arm, baby, the golden arm. They ain't ready for this. Big game today. You know, woke up, had a good big old breakfast. Get this man out of my face. <laughs> Just about to whoop the coaches, man. I don't know what else to say. About to whoop the coaches. What do you got to say? How do you feel about the? Uh, how you feel I'm about? I'm gonna hit Pena on the go ball for sure. How you feel about your personnel going against the coach today? Uh, I think Pena's got a, a speed advantage. I think we'll send him down uh, down the sideline. Probably use LK out of the backfield a little bit, and uh, you know, I think AJ AJ runs a great uh, slant pattern, so we'll probably hit him over the middle. How do you feel about your scheme advantage versus the coaches today? The coaches are slow, um, kind of chubby. Uh, the coaches. 
poor athleticism, you know, uh, we'll, I think we'll be good. I don't think they have a chance on offense. And what did you have for pregame meal today? Oh, we had eggs, bacon, sausage. Fed Pena about 16 eggs. He's looking good. He's looking Pena for What's your, what you gonna do when you score a touchdown? What's your move? Oh, I don't know. That right there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Troy, Troy, Troy. Trails in the building, baby. Hey, call me Sosa, baby. I come with Dreads off. It's all good. But I'm still Trey Elson, baby. Yeah. Pena need a captain. Hey, that's my captain right there. Pena. Pena, my captain. Oh, I'll be captain. Ooh. All right. Okay, Dr. Bill. Keep the game clean. Always. It's two hand touch. Tell your teammates these are old men that have families. Okay. <laughs> it's just two two hand touch. My I'm the official and whatever I say is final. <laughs> We're gonna play. We may play more than two possessions. We'll see how it goes. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have make sure you understand you have three downs to get ten yards. And then you get a new set of downs. Okay? Got it? Let's go defense first. Defense first. Defense first. Defense first. Coach, you're on defense also, first, you're on offense first. Hey, it's, it's three downs. It's it. Three downs, we have to get 10 yards. All right, that's easy. First one do a FedEx. All right. Everybody check, everybody check with the sideline. What are we doing? Right. FedEx. I'm going to say go. Nobody, nobody move. move. Nobody move. Nobody right. move. I'm going to say go. Everyone stand up and leave the sideline. I'm going to run it back. Okay, right. You heard it? We're going to stop and go. Everybody else, get open. What you want us to Just get open. This is fun. I'm running back. Hey, let's go. One of the old linemen, big AJ Hawkins, uh, was a running back. He did a, a halfback pass to the quarterback. <laughs> yeah, it was a perfect pass, and uh, that's what we scored on. One, the first touchdown, that's what we scored on. Uh, old lineman, big Justin Bell. He caught one in the back of the end zone by, uh, <laughs> from Robert. <laughs> it was so funny because he did Dante celebration. It was funny. It was hilarious. back-and-forth affair was threatening to end in a tie, but the players had one last shot. That right there was just a just opportunity, man, to just, you know, to go in the break, you know, on a high. Just just have a little fun and just come out and compete. And I don't care what, what it is about a sport, you know, when you come out and compete, that's the fun in the game. You know, there's nothing against your teammates, but you come out and compete and have fun, man. So we was going to do the same thing against the coaches, come out and compete. Okay, so we played for 60 minutes, for four quarters. My man right here. Feed Moncrief and the, the big version of Moncrief, we still yeah. get it done. So we finna go out here and we finna take And you got my boy right here. My, uh, feed I, just wanna, here. Uh, I just wanna say, you know, I've, uh, I've done everything that I, you know, had to do on the college level. And I feel, you know, I'm ready to take my talents to uh, Division 1 7 7. Hold, hold on, hold on, bro. So, so um, with, 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 with a performance like that, where actually, what, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with the performance? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go watch film on it. Uh, you know, make up, you know, correct my mistakes, everything. You know, I'm just one guy, you know, you got to thank my teammates. You know, we just came out here and, uh, you know, we just did the best we could, you know. 
uh, coaches, you know, they got old legs. We took advantage of that. Uh, we saw it on film. Yeah, we sure. Hey, great energy there. It's the way it's supposed to be in SEC, down to the wire. Yeah. You find a way to beat them. <laughs> Their eyes are awful. Their eyes are awful. Birmingham, Alabama, the Magic City, and host to the 2013 BBVA Compass Bowl. For the Rebels, getting back to and competing in a bowl is a goal that has now come to fruition. Well, you know, I just, I really expect us to just go out and compete and, you know, give our all and just, you know, do everything possible to, um, to win as many games as possible. But definitely, um, I expected a bowl game for sure, no question about that. I think everyone's really excited. I think, uh, I think we just got to find that balance, uh, as great teams do, uh, to uh, balance to having the fun side of it and going to work and working on uh, winning a bowl game while you're here. I mean, it's very exciting. I mean, I missed that my freshman and sophomore year. And um, I mean, we've been working hard since since the summer, since the spring. And I mean, you walk around here, you see the players, they're excited, they're enjoying it. And I mean, it's just exciting and it's fun. We're just ready to get out there and just show the world what we can do. It's chilling. Touchdown Birmingham at the game room, trying to have some fun. Yeah, it's on me. I pressed all. I didn't even know. Yeah. I have to, you know, show the youngin' how it's done. A little Madden. Feel me? Madden 12. Nothing crazy, but. Hey, I'm a boss. We're gonna make it work. I do this. Had a birthday yesterday. Now I'm at this beautiful place, man. I feel good. Feel good to be here, man. I tell you, truth, never in a million years see myself at, at a college playing football. See myself, you know what I'm saying, doing good and everything. Tell you the truth. Where you want for your birthday? Uh, this, this win. I want to get this win, this W, man. We want to take it back home. Well, take it home next year, man. Go to another bowl game, even bigger one. You know what I'm saying? Just, just go out there and play. That's all we come here to do is play. What would a win? It'll do a lot for this program, you know. Even though. This program, they had a lot of bowl wins. You know, this is probably not the biggest bowl they've played in, but it's just still this year from what we came from last year, now to this year, it's a big accomplishment. You know, it, a lot of the family coming, the Rebel family coming in, so it's going to be a great day for the Rebels. We're in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, FCA breakfast. Uh, Joe Kite's going to be speaking to us. It's 7.30 a.m. A little early. I, th I think it's going to wait me up like a pretty good breakfast. <laughs> so uh, hopefully it'll wait me up. One thing that I live through when I think about my life is living for 13. You know, no matter what I go through, I can do all things with courage and strength. Through my ups, my downs, my accomplishments, my disappointments, you know, I, can, I can get through it because of Christ. You know, so one thing Christ has taught me is, you know, to put him first. You know, don't worry about some busy schedule. Um, whatever you gotta do, you know, you put in for don't put no person, no schedule, no anything in front of him. So that's true that will come in. Thank you. Uh, the visiting children in the hospital, you know, um, they let them know that we care basically. Yeah, I guess I just talk to the little kids, you know, just try to cheer them up a little bit. Anything we can do, so we're looking forward to it. Well, I hope again that uh, we can somehow bring a smile to their face and maybe relieve uh, their thoughts from what they're going through at this this moment in life. And I know that uh, we always leave these type of events feeling like we got more out of it than, than we gave. But uh, hopefully we can uh, give something that brings a little joy to a young person's life today. He's young Teddy. His name is Young Teddy. Well, every Teddy Bear's name Teddy. First name Teddy, last name Bear. Sam Curtis, nice to meet you. This is my son, Curtis. You bought something for Curtis. You bought your a bowl game shirt, Ole Miss, you know. That's good. Oh, yeah. 
Sad to see it come to an end. One and cock. January 2nd, 72 hours from kickoff. There you go, good. Practicing on the football field of Birmingham Southern College, the Rebels are greeted with frosty weather conditions. Good throw. There you go. Here we go. Third down. No, you're down a distance. There you go. There you go. There you go. They'll do a bunch of three man rush, and we want to get you out so we can get you the ball. Now, what are you going to do once you call River? But we're going to work that way, right? Because we ain't blocking that guy. Oh, down right there, down right there, let's go! <laughs> now we're going to play 60 minutes and give, you know, the fans and Rebel Nation uh, the hardest 60 minutes they've ever seen, and I think we've done a great job with that. I think one of the biggest things I have to miss, like, when I leave here is uh, probably just the team camaraderie and just hanging with the fellas. And, you know, spent a long time here away from my family to be with my my second family. A lot of times, you know, when you're young, freshman, sophomore, sometimes you don't actually, you know, your mind is not programmed yet to, to come up here, get ready and compete. But, you know, later on in your career, you really enjoy the opportunity to come up here and, and get with the guys that you that you hang out with most, with your family. You know, they're going to bring you up when you're down. You know, you can bring them up when they're down. So it's all, um, it goes hand in hand with, you know, with you competing and you competing with those guys against, against the offense or, or the defense, whatever position you play. It's very special. It's very special because, I mean, I mean, I know, I know I gave it up for Jason Jones. I know Jason Jones gave it up for me. And in the special, you know, just know that this team, and like I said, just like a freshman, like Denzel, he gave it up for me. I mean, it's just special to know that, that, you know, that we have the type of love and this type of bond or whatever, so, so people can come, so people can come together and it just, it's just a, such a great thing, man, how much this team has been through and how much we've accomplished. We've been through the tough times or whatever, so when the tough times came, you know, it was, man, we got just got to keep pushing, man. You know, we look forward to the next year and to the next year. I know we had two bad years, you know, back to back, but we came back this year, you know, and look, we made it to a bowl. And I mean, I think it's just like the brotherhood, you know, with all us hanging together and stuff. And I remember um, the last year, you know, last year when we lost, EJ looked at me, he's like, Fur, man, we're going to bowl, uh, you know, our senior. He's like, man, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a high bowl, I don't care if it's a low bowl, but we're going to a bowl. And I looked down and said, you're right, E. And uh, I mean, you know, it came true. And I mean, I remember, I remember looking EJ dead in the face and he told me that, man, and I was like, you know, I feel what he's saying. The walk in here, Civil Rights Museum, Birmingham, Alabama. Check this out. A lot of history back here. And hopefully we have a good time. A lot of people are interested in coming here, so we'll see how it turns out. So I'm not gonna lie. I'm from Mississippi, man. Yeah. 29? 29 is a little chilly for me now. No, I practice. We just ain't got shoulder pads. True. Full speed. Get ready for pit. I don't even like the ball to be 100 with you. SCC is the best. Pit. I 
be surprised if they don't quit in the first half. It's gonna get ugly. We got the best receiver court in the SEC. Take that back in the league of college football. So all I can tell them uh, play about 20 yards off. Tell them when it's time to eat. The last day of practice before the bowl. For a team that fought and clawed their way into their first postseason in two years, this weekend's matchup is special. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Communicate, communicate. Watch the screens on them, that's it. That away, that away. Push, push, push. Good Joe, good Joe, good Joe. Right there, right there. Hey, good, good, good. Anybody see that Florida game last night? Yes, sir. What'd y'all think about that? It was embarrassing. Uh, somebody just said somebody just said they weren't ready to play. They weren't focused, coach. That's what you got to do. We got to get locked in. Lock into your alignments and assignments and do what you're supposed to do. Get back over to that hotel. Start preparing for the game a little bit. It's Thursday. I don't want you to get all tight and do this. It's not about that yet. Just start locking in a little bit for the game. Everybody good? Yes, sir. All right, let's start out right here with this first group. Let's go land chart D on three. One, two, three. Land chart D. It means the world to me just because, you know, I know how great these fans are here in uh, Oxford and just around Mississippi, and I just know how much how much of a team we are, you know, more this year than last year. And this game means so much to me. Just to put that helmet on one more time and to strap on them shoulder pads and to put on that old Miss uniform, that means the world to me because I know I got 60 more minutes to go out there and fight with my brothers. And I know for those 60 more minutes, I'm just gonna lay everything I got on, everything I got in me, I'ma just lay it on the field because, you know, those are my brothers in there. And, you know, I just, I'm just glad for the opportunity to just be here at this great program and just to, to just play 60 more minutes with my brothers. And, you know, I'ma remember this game for the rest of my life. Yeah, baby. Okay, For the seniors right here. This our last practice. Hey, man, this our last practice. Let's, let's talk to the camera a little bit, bro. It's our last game. Last game. Our last practice. We ain't got last no practice. pads on. I really want no some pads pad. on, though. Uh, you got your ride grin over there with the fresh edge from Cam Cameron Wiggum. <laughs> <laughs> Check him out. Hey, man. 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 <laughs> we live out here. This is no work here, boy. Yeah, we're going live today. Live. All out. No, the All D line, line period. We run the team. We take line. care of business, and we're going to do it today. Okay. Here it is. For y'all. We got to win today. We got to win today. I'm so glad I decided to stay in the South and play football. Boy, it's I cold. I can't play nowhere else. Huh? I can't play nowhere else. Uh -uh. I can't go up north and play ball. It's too cold. It's too cold. <laughs> I want speed. I want speed. Slow speed. You give, you covering the guy. He's giving you fast hands and hips. Speed. Speed. That's it right there. Now drive. Make sure I'm ready. Sideline. Sideline. Take Couple get offs. We're going 55. We're going to go regular alignment. Okay. Regular alignment. 55 deep left. Somebody light me up. Boom. Let's go back. Just knowing that this is my last time playing 60 minutes for my school, for, for, for the, the blood, sweat, and tears. You know, the hours spent up here on the field, off the field. You know, the hours spent, you know, in the training room if you had an injury, the hours spent watching film. It all comes down to this last 60 minutes that I have and the opportunity that I have to give my all for the University of Mississippi. It's so special to me and I will never, never let this moment pass me by without giving my whole 60 minutes. Well, I think it just validates them and us as coaches and validates that we're on the right track. And, and that's all that I think it does. But certainly it gives them a confidence and that, uh, man, we bought into something, believed in it, and helped start the change. And they, they can come back in years to come and be known for that. And that's something I'm very proud for them. Bowling with Pete, you know, just doing our thing, having a good time, having a good time, relaxing before we get, until we get on them boys. Two guns.
lane is rigged. This lane has got to be rigged, man. It's got to be. Looks like in second place with 613 points, Ole Miss. In first place with 803 points, it's the Pitt Panthers. Go up, guys. Yeah, he real. What he real is. He real, bro. Two days, boy, going down. A real bowling match. A real bowling match in two days. Kickoff luncheon for the BBDA Conference Bowl presented by the Sheriff's in Birmingham. We're thrilled to have all of you here. It's an exciting week. It's Bowl Week in Birmingham. excited and it's time to play. Uh, I know that both teams feel that way. We've uh, had an enjoyable week here in Birmingham and the BBVA Compass people have been remarkable hosts and um, the Sheraton people have been wonderful. I think our kids have enjoyed uh, being around each other and the bowl experience. Obviously the, the culmination of that would be playing well tomorrow and getting a win uh, for our football program and, and that's uh, what we've really turned our attention to over the last 24 hours and and on into tonight and, and preparing for tomorrow. And uh, we're excited, thrilled to be here to play at the, the old great lady. So many uh, great games have been played here. And uh, hopefully our guys can uh, rise to the occasion tomorrow and, and play their best football. You know, you watch all the other teams, how they perform, and some probably would say that they haven't performed up to their ability and for whatever reason. And it's almost like we're starting a, a new season again because it has been quite, quite a long time. but. Um, that's from the coach's perspective, but you have to at some point depend upon your, your young men that you've prepared to play, you know, 12 games in this season and, and that they get the magnitude of this moment. Uh-oh, it's turf. It's turf. Uh-oh. It's turf. I love turf. So I can vroom, vroom. Okay. Sure, I think it'll be loud. I think it'll be loud. All closed in, so when all the fans get in here, it'll be real loud. Man, that trip home and that couple weeks off you got before you come back to school, and for you seniors to leave on a win, think about the difference in the emotions that you'll have. It's a different emotion. We want you to do it the right way. You deserve it. You make sure you get yourself ready to do your part, okay? Yes, sir. Here we go. Just the great players who came through here. You know, the Patrick Willis, the Eli Manning, the Parade Jerry's, you know. It's like you want to be a part of this program because you got other schools like Alabama and LSU, but there's no special place like being here at Ole Miss. I feel like out of all the schools I've been to, this is more of a family and a, a place where the coaches and the AD and everyone just cares about you. And it's, it's more of a family more than just a game of football. We, we brothers and we just all one big family. Uh, the thing most important about how I feel about getting back to the ball is, man, I could just, I could just think about guys, the guys that 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 played that were over me the first combo, like Michael Orr, Jason Cook, Jerry Harris, Kittrell Lockett, and man, you know, and J Greg Hardy. I feel like I owe it to them guys to get get this program back, you know, just like because you know those guys they turn old Miss around or whatever, and and it's my duty, you know, to leave a legacy and uh, lead how those guys were going. Well, to play for this this coaching staff and to play with the guys that came in this year and the guys I've been with the years past, it's it's really been a, it's really been a blessing. I know we we had some battles this year where we were so close, but you know yet still so far away. But I think those games that we were close and we still lost, it built character for us to make it and and play like we never played before. I believe the last game we played against State, we played a full 60 minutes, not a second less, not a second more. 
I think that we came to play, I think we came to battle, and I believe that those losses that were very close matured us and gave us the opportunity to win that extra game. They'll always be special to me. I mean, they're the first uh, senior class that I coached here at the University of Mississippi, and, and they're the guys that uh, probably uh, have carried the brunt of the negativity around the last few years and have had to hear it all and, and live it and walk across campus being disappointed and discouraged and now they get to hold their head high and know that they helped start the change here uh, to get this program back to where it should be. Hey, what's up, baby? Over here chilling for the do this little thing for the crowd, for the fans, family, baby. We are rally, we on, man. Go out here. Oh, it's been good right now. I mean, they're doing everything they can. We have a, real, a lot of fun right now. Uh, I mean, just hype and ready to get up around the stage and say hey to the family. All right. Now, Rebels, help me welcome tight end, senior leader, number 83, the man with the best hair on the team. <laughs> I'm actually going to say one more thing. Uh, I'm gonna you. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you that. You'll be surprised. And then you're going to talk. Okay. And then when he's done, I'm going to introduce you. And now, let me hear you. Bring up to the mic. Number 38. I would love for yeah, you to come Yeah, I was going to say it anyway. Yeah. I was going to say it anyway. You want to yeah. do that? Yeah. Tomorrow at the game. What's up? tomorrow and I know that you will stand strong with us in making it a very difficult atmosphere for the Pittsburgh Panthers to play in and let's bring home our seventh victory thank you so much game day Legion Field Birmingham Alabama the 85 year old stadium has played host to countless gridiron battles Today, it's Rebels versus Panthers. Although technically a neutral site, today Birmingham looks like Oxford, Mississippi, as a sea of red fills the stadium an hour before kickoff. We're going for 10. Let's get it. 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 let us Earn this. Go get it. Go get it. Them boys wanna talk. Hey, I like when they talk. You get what? We gonna show what it is today, baby. Little bowler competition? That don't matter. It's time to play football now. One time, you got the red on. One more time, you got the red on. Let's go. Put it on the fierce. Hey, finish, finish, finish. Be thankful for the opportunity. One more time, baby. One more time for Rubber Nation. For me. Let's right go. here, baby. We on. Hold it. Hold it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One more time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, right here, baby. Right here. Let's get out of here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Hey, I don't care what happened, man. Let's be that varsity. Let's play for 60 minutes. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go for 60 minutes. Let's do something different for y'all seeing. Let's do something different for y'all seeing. I'm fired up. Get fired up. Hey! I'm fired up. Get fired up. Hey! Get fired up. Hey! Get fired up. Hey! Let's go on, baby. Let's go on, dude. One, two, three. Let's go. Hey, all week long. Really, all the way, about a month now, the word I 
keep hearing over and over that I want to talk about real quick is the word lock. The word lock. I, everywhere I went over here, man, we're going to lock the legion. We're going to lock the legion like we locked the vault. And man, Rebel Nation has shown up today. So Deep. hey, real simple, just like everything else we have with our core values, lock means this to us. Number one, here's why you're going to win the game today. Love. We've said it all year long, man. The team that loves the most plays the hardest for each other. That's why you don't get personal fouls. That's why you're the least penalized team in all the SEC, because you know that what you do affects the person next to you. You will love one another today. It'll show in the way you play. It'll show in the way you perform on the sideline, and you relate to one another and that we relate to you. The O, others. Others. Last night I go to the pep rally. See your bread as far as you can see. You have no idea what you've done for Rebel Nation. And not only are you playing for here, we define set success by you coming back in here and looking at the guy next to you and knowing you did everything within your power today to make sure he was successful. Not you. It's not about you. It's about did you do everything that that guy is the successful today. Not only in here, but all of that sea of red out there that came to see you. You owe it to them to give them 60 more minutes of passionate football. The C, right. commitment. You remember it? Yes, sir. I still wear mine. Coach Brevere, if you still got yours Yes, on. sir. I still remember it tonight. I remember it when you all shook my hand and said, I'm in to the end, Coach. No matter what happens, the valleys, the mountains, whatever we do, I'm in. And you have been. And you've been faithful to that. And today, you get to finish your commitment. You get to finish what we started about a year ago. We can finish it today. And lastly, the K. I'm not too smart, CJ. I had to think a long time about the K. <laughs> and I kept coming back to this. When you were a little kid, you'd always play these games when you're in the car traveling with your family. Knock, knock. Who's there? Yeah, yeah. One more time. Knock, knock. Who's there? Knock, knock. Who's there? Just a few minutes. We're going to kick this thing off. Yes, sir. You're going to play a Big East team, and their conference is 4-1 and one in, in, in play, in bowl play this year. And they are more excited. I've heard it ever since this thing's been announced. They're so excited to play. Captains, they're excited to play an SEC team, in particular Ole Miss. we got great tradition. Archie Manning right here in 1969 set the record in SEC. You get to represent people like that today. In just a minute, you're going to get to knock, knock, and they're going to say, who's there? And the Ole Miss Rebels are going to be there. Yes, You're showing up all time. So, I, before I end it, I have to ask Jason Jones. Where you at, Jason? Right here, coach. Can we say it with you, please? Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Say it with me. I, I am an Ole Miss Rebel. the Rebels onto the field. Ole Miss charging out right now in their red jerseys. Pitts wearing their white. Rose is ready to kick it away and Jones and Pitts waiting for the kick. And here it is from Bryson Rose and the BBVA Compass Bowl is underway. And here's the kick taken at the four yard line by Pitts. Comes back to the middle of the field, the 10 to the 15. Hammered and dropped at the 17 yard line on a big stick there by Channing Ward, the freshman from Aberdeen, Mississippi. Here's a snap and a handoff and trying the left side and running into traffic for no gain. An early first down conversion by the Panthers came through the air instead of off the legs of their ground game. But their chances of establishing a passing attack were quickly turned away. On third and three for Pitt from their own 40 yard line, left hash. First possession, 12.38 to go, no score. There's a pick by the Rebels at the 40. It's Sinquez Golson who stepped in front of it, gets it down to the 23 yard line. Boy, he telegraphed that one, and Jones was the intended receiver. It's kind of like, almost kind of like a cover two coverage where I just, you know, stay inside the receiver. And um, I was surprised because, you know, they had six weeks to prepare and they didn't get away from the game. And it's usually when they got uh, two receivers out to the um, field, you know, like a running back and a receiver on the other side, they usually run the double slants, you know. And I just went with what we've been working on and what we've seen on film, you know, the past six weeks and stepped in front of them and just sat there and waited for the ball to get there. We knew they had, uh, you know, 
good receivers. Uh, they had a good running back. We just knew we had to get to the quarterback on the pass and stop the run, you know, and just, we got Coach Womack, you know, the rest of the coaches, we trying to build, you know, like a, a seek and destroy defense, like that killer instinct, you know, and that's just type of, you know, to this day, right now, if I get our defense players up, they're going to have the same intensity, like, let, let's go, let's get out. When Sequoia's got the pick, I knew it was pivotal that we scored, you know, I mean, because when a break comes our way, we score. And I knew we had a short field, I knew we have a potent offense, and I knew that we need to get up on these guys so, you know, take out any confidence, you know, maybe put them in a the dump. So I was like, you know, we got we got to go out here and score. I was telling the old line, I was like, we just got to get it done. Pistol formation here for Bo Wallace, who's back in with the 14. Play action, steps on the pocket, fires to the end zone. He's got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Ole Miss. And hauling it in for the Rebels is Jamez Logan. His first touchdown catch of the season. And the Rebels strike first. We uh, play action, and I can remember not really giving a good play action because the safety was, was you know, doing something funny. And Jamez just ran a great route. And, um, you know, found the found the space right there in the middle, and I was able to, to put it in there, and he made a great catch on it. From pre-snap, me and Bo knew we had what we wanted, and um, as we as we went through it, um, seeing the safeties go out the uh, hash in the middle of the field wide open, all I had to do was beat the linebacker. So that's what I did. I wasn't, you know, too busy focused on the coverage. Uh, once the ball was in the air, my focus was on the ball, and um, Either way, you're going to get hit, so you might as well catch the ball. Either way, if you drop it, you're going to get hit, so you might as well catch it. So that's what I did, caught it. Six points, celebrated with my team, ran towards the fan. Good feeling. Hey, all day. Hey, that's just one. I need about three more. All right. Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go. Game time. Game time. A salty Rebel defense took the field and forced a Pittsburgh three and out, setting the stage for a surging Rebel offense. Snap to Bo Wallace, pressure up the middle, fires, and he's got a sliding catch at the 35-yard line by Dante Moncrief. There's a snap to Bo, and he has a quick look-in pass at the 40-yard line from the right slot to Logan. He makes the grab and has the first down, a gain of five. The snap. And the fake to Scott, and Wallace keeps it, goes straight ahead to the 49th. Wallace on the snap, a little slip screen inside to Moncrief, catches it, works back toward the sidelines and is tackled at the 35-yard line, will gain five on that. Pistol formation here, and the handoffs to Scott, sweeping left, needs a 30 for the first down, he's got it out of bounds on the far sidelines, inside the 30 around the 27-yard line. There's the snap, he fires over the middle, crossing route is caught, tackled at the 27-yard line is Jeff Scott, as he was in a slot left and came across the middle. Scott goes in motion to the far side. Wallace fakes it to him, throws deep over the middle. He has Mackey, diving effort. He's got it. Touchdown, Ole Miss. We went five wide, and, um, you know, with Jeff and Mackey out there, it's it's a matchup that we like. And uh, so Mackey was on a, on a Mike linebacker running a vertical, and, uh, you know, I, I knew pre-snap that that was probably going to be my guy. So uh, threw it up to Mackey, and he, he really did make an unbelievable catch on it. Mackey had been telling me the whole year that, you know, he's thrown one, he's ran one. And so uh, I got to get him a, a touchdown pass. So, uh, you know, I told him that, that that's uh, that's his pass. That's that's his reception. I had to get for him. While the Rebel offense was having no trouble moving down the field, the Pittsburgh offense was finding it extremely difficult to get anything going. Coach called the play. I said, CJ, it's on because. That's something that we did at practice, and even our O-line told us, like, man, y'all going to kill them in the game with that. So coach called it perfect. We lined up. We ran it. And um, I came off, and I got, I got the sack, you know, and celebrating. But number one thing is if my man, if CJ don't do what he's supposed to do, then I don't get the sack. If the guys to the left side, EJ and Brown, don't do what they're supposed to do, we don't get the sack at all. So it's, you know, that's one thing our mind, mindset of the D-line had is that, you know, when it comes down to making a play, just if, if everybody hit everybody out, you know, we rush together, you know, we can 
We can get sacks, we can get TFL, we can do what we need to do as a defensive line. Early in the second quarter, with the Rebels backed up to their own three, the Panthers would finally catch a break. Wallace in the end zone looking to throw, sprints out to his right. Downfield, he'll fire it and he will uh, throw it into heavy traffic and it's tipped and picked off at the 25-yard line. Sinceri steps up, looks to throw, fires the end zone, touchdown. Wow. Running down and a little hitch, Devin Street just caught it for the uh, TD. But, hey, you just got to keep playing. You understand? Hey, hey, you just got to keep playing. You got to keep tempo on them and you got to outplay them. While the score seemed to Pittsburgh a crack in the door, the Rebels would come right back and slam it shut. It would start with a 49-yard kickoff return by Jalen Walton. And the fake to Mackey. Wallace keeps off the right side. He's got some room inside the 30, 25, and knocked off his feet around the 23-yard line as quarterback keeper all the way. Pass near side to Sanders. Caught the 15. Turns to the outside of the 10 to the 5. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. And the Rebels strike fast and answer the touchdown and go back up 20-7 to with 6.02 to go in the half. It was a run play and um, the corner was playing soft and it was a guy that you know we thought that we could take advantage of and especially with Vince and Dante they're kind of bigger body guys so um, you know threw it out there to Vince and I think he made a spin move on the uh, on the corner and uh, beat everybody else to the end zone. Pittsburgh would respond with a field goal, but the Rebels would once again come right back. Hey, get down deep! Get down deep! Let's go! Let's go! There's the snap with 10 seconds. Bo Wallace over the middle. It's going to be caught at the 15-yard line. Furbia Allen, the tight end, with only five seconds. This will be a first down at the 14, a gain of 15 yards. Down to the right hash, there's a kick that has the distance. Stan Sandroni was right underneath it, went over his head. Good job there, Stan. He got it, David. Dead on right there. The third quarter would see the Ole Miss defense dominate. Sincere is under center. And there's a handoff. Oh, and a stick in the backfield of the 20-yard line with the handoff. Mike Mary clobbers Shell. And, uh, I mean, he was there in a quickness. That was a big hit and a punch right there. Mike Mary again. We talked about their pressure packages. This time it's a Mike linebacker. He comes in, times his blitz perfectly. A loss of five. Thanks to the junior from Clearwater, Florida. We bring the fight, they don't want it. They don't want it. That's how we play. We play That's how we play. We play our best football in the second half. We play our best football in the second half. While the Rebel defense was keeping the Panthers backed up, the Rebels would take advantage of a short field. Quick pass out far side, grabbed by Moncrief. He fights for the end zone, breaks the plane. Is he inbounds or not? No. They said he's down, actually, about a half yard shy of the TD. It was a quick hitter to Moncrief, and I mean, he made it like a running back. He was fighting for the end zone, but fell a little bit short. Good tackle by Gonzalez. 
Rebels line of scrimmage immediately. Third and goal from there. Quarterback sneak, Barry Brunetti. He looks to be in there. Let's see. One yard touchdown dive for Barry Brunetti. His third rushing touchdown of the season. The backup sophomore quarterback from Memphis has Ole Miss up 30 to 10. We got nine more minutes to play ball. Do we have to play seven, eight, nine months? Play ball. Hey, look. We got nine minutes. We got plenty of time to get some more. We got time to go eat. Plenty of time to go eat, dog. Rambo, plenty of time to go eat. With starting tailback Jeff Scott out of the game due to injury, freshman running back Jalen Walton and Itavius Mathers were called on to carry the ball. For Mathers, the opportunity would produce his first collegiate touchdown. There's the snap. He's going to hand it off straight ahead up the middle. Walton, he may break clear. He's to the 40. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. 10, 5, touchdown, and that is Mathers, not Walton. Itavius Mathers on a handoff right up the middle. It was number 5, not number 6. And the freshman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, gets his first career touchdown, and we'll see many more. As the clock wound down on the 2013 Compass Bowl, the Ole Miss Rebels had claimed the victory. Congratulations to the University of Mississippi on an outstanding season and a well-played BBVA Compass Bowl. My pleasure on behalf of the St. Fred Sankton family to present the most valuable player trophy to Bo Wallace, quarterback for Ole Miss. Congratulations. On behalf of the more than 12,000 BBBA Compass employees, I'd like to congratulate Ole Miss and Pitt on your successful season and for the exciting game. My distinct pleasure to award you, Coach Freeze, with the BBBA Compass Bowl Team Championship Trophy. Well deserved for the entire Rebel Nation. Just remember, you know, I'm remember the small things, you know, being in the locker room, my teammates, you know, probably just watching the NFL game or just, you know, in the, uh, eating a meal, you know, just talking about the game and everything like that. And I'm just gonna miss just the little things, you know, being in the weight room, dancing with, you know, the dancing with my brothers, and I'm just gonna miss everything about here. I can't even just single out one thing I'm gonna miss because there's so much love at this place, there's so much blessings here, and I'm just gonna miss everything about Ole Miss, you know. This season, just the way we finished this season, is just special. And I just know that Ole Miss is heading in the right direction. And I can look back and I can even tell my family, my kids, you know, I was a part of that. I was, we was, we was that 2012 season and we started Ole Miss, you know, headed towards the SEC Championship and toward the National Championship. So I'm just looking back at this year and just say, you know what, you know, just thank you, Lord, for just bringing me to this great place and just thank Coach Freeze for this great opportunity that and just believing in us. People will are better I suggest that they keep an eye out for Ole Miss because, you know, we've been the underdogs every year I've been here, and but but that's a good thing because it makes you, you know, play up to your full potential. But um, 
playing that last 60 minutes, man, and, and watching the offense, the defense, and special teams play all 60 minutes and not a second less was just like, you know, it was overwhelming for me, man, to just, and I was overjoyed, not with happiness, but with like, with, with a whole lot of joy, you know? And looking at these guys, I'm just like, man, I can't wait to see what they're gonna do in the future. I think what we got coming back, and hopefully the recruits that we got coming in, um, I think we can be scary, you know, next year. I think we got the chance to be 10 win team, hopefully, you know, 11. And um, I just, it's so exciting, really. You just don't really too much know what to say. It's just so exciting. I just can't wait to get the season back rolling around again to see, you know, what we can put together. The goals are to um, compete for a national championship. Of course, we got to win the SEC championship. So um, with the team that we got coming back, I think we're going to be um, the team to beat in the SEC next year. Next year, I think, you know, mostly in the spring, I just want to solidify our line and our offense into a because we already know our identity, you know? So I think we can only go up from here, pretty much. I mean, we got, I think we're re returning 20 starters, which is something nobody else is doing this year, I'm sure of, you know? And I think that's gonna be a big part of building this, this program, man, and going on this journey. I think, we, I think we're only just getting started. This team is special. I know that Coach Freeze and the coaching staff is bringing out the best in everyone. I know they will bring out the best in everyone and nothing less, man. Rebel Nation, uh, I think, I think that this, this support that we have behind us with our fans and all the people that put into the program, you know, uh, I think they're a big part of who we are and and what we do as uh, football players from the University of Mississippi. And I think that um, that that'll be the number one thing that I remember and I value the most. You know, it's, it's definitely been a difficult two years, and the same people that I've been speaking with last year or seeing in the Grove last year, they're still there this year, rooting us on and cheering us on. So it's definitely made it a lot easier for us to continue to work hard, knowing that we still have a you know a team behind us, and that would be Rebel Nation. I think we got the best fans in the country. You know, football, baseball, basketball, just everything, just around, and um. If I had to say something to everybody at Rebel Nation, is I'm just excited as y'all are. I'm just as anxious, you know, just for the season to get started. It's special. It's special, you know, because those fans believed in us. They, 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 they didn't quit. They didn't give up. You know, those fans, when you look up in the stands and you see those fans, you know, crying, you see those fans sweating, giving and yelling as loud as they can for, you know, for Rebel football, it just shows and it means a lot that you have a whole fan base, you know, standing here behind us and, you know, believing in us and never quitting on us and never, and never, you know what I'm saying, never uh, believing what the uh, critics say, you know, going into this year, you know, a lot of people didn't believe in us, but, you know, that we knew that if we had the Ole Miss fans and if we believed in each other, we know we can do something special this year, so, you know, I just want to thank the Ole Miss fans for just believing in us and just buying in and just, you know, we all, as a team and as a family, we all love, we all love you and we just thank you. I mean, from day one, Coach Freeze told us we're on the journey. And, uh, you know, we understood that this year was just part of that journey, step one of that journey. And, and, uh, and that was just getting the basics down. And the fact that we got the basics down on this program and what he wanted from us and we, we were able to accomplish the 76 season means a lot because now, we're, we're recruiting great talent, and those guys are gonna learn the same philosophies that we learn. And when you have more talent, more players, the, the fans behind you, and you got a good leadership core and great coaching staff, I mean, you're destined for greatness. Couldn't be more pleased with our effort. Um, obviously, we still have a long way to go on this journey we're on, but uh, I like to consistently talk about is the process and uh, the process in this first uh, step of our, our leg of our journey. Uh, couldn't be more pleased with the, the e effort and attitude that our kids have given to us. And they've bought in and they've enjoyed being around each other. We have fun together and uh, I think it shows on the field. And you know, the message will continue to be a consistent message of let's give great effort for 60 minutes and play the next play and see what the scoreboard says at the end. But uh, very, very pleased with uh, the first part of this journey.